Kau yang tahu wa, yang usi sampai burukkan roka. Atau rumah kau yang tahu wa, atau teli takkan awal roka yang nampu life ya. Nampak dua yang nasir. Bola, naga go limo, atau teli takkan awal film, naga go kasih tertuan nampu life. Bola, atau sesuatu yang baru, orang yang nikah tahu, naya mau kisah, atau baca baca kau yang nasinu, atau teli takkan awal yang nampu roka nampu life ya, nampak dua yang nasir. Bola lima, naga jadi suka lembasa. Tunggu teli takkan. Bola FM. Bola FM. Good evening. This is FBC News. I'm Akusito Tale. In this bulletin, more military recruitment to continue this year. Singa talkers local economy riding on a high and cattle rustling worries Yangara Pastoral Company. <music> Acting Military Commander William Enopoto says all 968 soldiers currently serving missions overseas are safe and well taken care for. Rear Admiral Naupoto says this includes all their missions in Middle East, such as Iraq and Syria. Alan Stolz has more. The reassuring message came from the acting RFMF commander, Viliame Naupoto. All our soldiers are safe. Uh, in all our missions in Sinai, uh, in Iraq, and uh, also in uh, Syria, with Andov, we have also people in Sudan, South Sudan, uh, and we have uh, two observers with, uh, with Anso, which is they operating almost in the same area as uh, uh, and of uh, soldiers, and we have that, uh, uh, but they are, sorry, company plus in, in uh, Lebanon. Uh, they all all okay and doing well. This is a new battalion. We have just finished all the rotation, so they're going to serve out the one year before we begin the rotation again to change. Rear Admiral Naupoto says the military will also be looking at recruiting more soldiers. We have one uh, recruit that, that is ongoing. Uh, it'll be a mix of... Uh, of uh, officer cadets. Uh, we're trying to get a uh, few people to come in and train as officer cadets. Uh, some of them would uh, go into the engineers. There's a program that we run called the tra Training School, TTS, and some also for the territorial force. Uh, we're hoping that in the end we're going to recruit it in, in this, this one, uh, 200. The acting commander says after this recruitment, then they will decide on whether they will need to recruit more people this year or wait until 2017. Soldiers from the RFMF are taken on as United Nations peacekeepers in some of the most volatile areas in the world. The RFMF also makes up some of the largest contingents on these missions. Ellen Stahls, FBC News. Cattle rustling and deliberate damage to fences are causing issues for state-owned Yangara Pastoral Company Limited. This came to light after the government had to compensate more than 100 farmers for damage caused by livestock from the company. Madhiyum Boletamana has more on the story. Max, following that, the board director of Yangara Pastoral Company Limited, Simon Cole, not mincing his words when venting on the frustration the facility has had to contend with to date. We are frustrated by the ongoing and often deliberate cutting of fences to steal cattle, and the lack of action by the police to identify the culprits. In recent years, Yangara has lodged over 60 reports, but no action has been forthcoming to these cases. YPCL, through the Ministry of Public Enterprises, has had to compensate 109 farmers for the damage of their crop by cattle grazing outside their boundaries in the last two years. However, but as Cole puts it, they've also had their fair share of challenges in 2015. And we lost a, a number of cattle due to lack of pasture. Honey production was also badly hit. We have also incurred extra costs for feeding, extra costs to repair fences, and extra costs to, prepare, to patrol our boundaries. Cole says YPCL will continue to guard its boundaries well, adding that this can only be achieved if their neighbours work closely with them. We will continue to pay for additional boundary riders to check the condition of our perimeter fences on a regular basis. And we will continue the policy of locating farm staff in remote grazing areas to watch over our cattle. In short, we strive to be good neighbours. 
YPCL has a herd of over 5,000 cattle, 2,000 sheep, a number of bee honey farms and a cane farm yielding 40 hectares. Madhim Tamana, FBC News. The growing number of high-profile events hosted in Singatoka has got the private sector and leading tourist properties looking to the future with great optimism. This comes as the government continues to support the growth of its municipalities. Madhim Tamana was in Singatoka this week and spoke to a number of leading figures in the Coral Coast. As you know, Singatoka is the capital of the Coral Coast uh, you know, and hosts um, thousands of tourists every year. The Coral Coast is a hive of activity as locals and tourists flock the rugby mad Nanronga province to be part of the Coral Coast Sevens. You know, the one thing we have here on the Coral Coast is lots of accommodation. We have lots of resorts. So if we can get um, international uh, fixtures, uh, IRB fixtures here on the Coral Coast, you know, it's going to boost tourism, which is going to be good for the country, good for employment, good for everybody. You know, as we, uh, I've said over the last couple of days, you know, uh, we uh, contribute quite a lot of... Uh, uh, income to um, our local community, our local economy, and um, we employ over 2,000 staff in all our resorts. So, you know, we're a big, uh, big part of what, what happens here on the Coral Coast. The influx of people is also a good time for the local business community. Uh, I'm also so glad that uh, now we are having this uh, international golf tournament uh, every year, Fiji Open, uh, which is also part of the Coral Coast. So all these activities really. Uh, are quite significant and uh, makes uh, Singatoka being the capital of the Coral Coast even that is more important. The government has recognized the status of the annual Sevens event and is looking to prop up the tournament to new heights in the future. With such events of course what you do get is a lot of people traveling into Fiji which means they spend a lot of the foreign currency, they stay at our hotels, they contribute to the economy by paying you know the environmental levy, the service turnover tax and VAT, um, but it's also good for the uh, local economy at the same time, uh, local produce is being bought. Uh, it's also an opportunity to promote Fiji uh, as a destination. Some people may come here to play rugby with their families and decide to come back again on a visit and a holiday. The Coral Coast hosts well over 250,000 visitors each year. With the support of government and the business community, hopes are that these figures will rise significantly in the next three years. Madhim Tamana, FBC News. The Fiji Independent Commission Against Corruption held its first annual awards event last night. Awards were handed out for Best Team, Best Employee and a host of other categories recognizing the efforts of staff members. Chief Guest Attorney General Aya Sayed Kayum commended FICEC for its work in preventing corruption and persecuting offenders. So it is very critical that your organization remains absolutely squeaky clean. This is why the levels of salary that you receive is much higher than other agencies. It's precisely for that reason. The investigators in FICAC receive a higher level of salary than, say, in, in the police department. And the reason why we've done that when we started off with the rationale was because FICAC also has the ability to prosecute other agencies too. The FICAC Awards Night now becomes an annual event. A team of police officers met with the residents of Mana Street in Arere Nasinu yesterday following a spate of robberies and house break-ins. Police spokesperson Anna Naisoro says they have taken note of concerns and have assured residents that changes will be made in as far as service delivery is concerned. One resident, Aren Gounder, says there haven't been any break-ins after the issue was highlighted by FBC News a week ago. Gounder says they've also seen police patrolling the area at night. A neighbor watch zone is also expected to be set up in the area. After the break, our successful Fijian is a man with a passion for tea. And I love Mirchi FM. Hi, my name is Sonny from Canberra. I love listening Mirchi FM online. I am Urmila Devi, I am Tawwa. I am Shandil and Ashnil. Tawwa is locked in the air. I am here in Mirchi FM. Mirchi FM is hot. I am Shelly in Tawwa and Nausori. Mirchi music simply been dance in Nausori. I am here in Mirchi FM. Mirchi FM is very nice. Welcome back, this is FBC News. 
44 women leaders from Serua, Namosi and Tailevu met in Suva this week to highlight issues facing the community related to gender equality. This is part of Family Pacific's Women Human Security First campaign consultations. Ellen Stolls has more. 65-year-old Manise Vakauni Tambua is pushing for salaries for 130 community health workers in the Nosori Health Center, Weni Mukasi Hospital and Mokani Health Center. She believes this consultation will help her get the message across. Uh, I really believe in gender equality. Uh, coming from the community or from the rural areas, they paid the village head headmen. Why can't they pay the community health worker? Pushpa Mani is the president of the Akriti Mothers Club in Vivi Road and says women in the rural areas need more encouragement. In rural areas. So, you know, the ladies, the, at times they are surprised to hear what are their rights. Family Pacific Executive Producer, Director Sharon Bagwan Roll says forums like these are about creating solidarity on issues that women leaders face in the community. Whether they're talking about the most basic things, whether it's drainage, access on roads, health issues, um, or even the broader issue of decision making, they know that when they're talking about these gender equality demands, there's a commitment there. Sarem Damuni works at Diva for Equality and deals with women in diverse backgrounds and sexual orientation. I believe that this kind of workshop is important to bring these women and make them know and understand the policies that are, that are being implemented for them. Similar consultations will be organized for the Western Division and the North. Ellen Stalls, FBC News. Complaints of poor services have prompted the Assistant Health Minister to visit health facilities in the Northern Division. Vina Badnagar says apart from visiting the Lambasa Hospital and nearby health centres, she will also be conducting public consultations at the Lambasa Civic Centre from the 21st of January. The Assistant Health Minister says she wants the public to come forward and raise their concerns and grievances. Quite a number of complaints uh, have been received from Lombasa, so that is why I thought that we should go to Lombasa first and hear them out and see what I can do to facilitate um, in, to, towards improving our service delivery. But Nagar will be in Nambuwalu tomorrow. Minister for Industry and Trade, Faya Skoya, has commended the work carried out in Lotoka to promote it as a tourist destination. Koya made the comments whilst being chief guest at the Lotoka Chamber of Commerce annual general meeting last night. He says Lotoka being the only other city of Fiji is a significant contributor to the economy with a growing manufacturing base. Koya told the business community that it is equally important for Lotoka to explore opportunities in tourism. Koya told the forum that developments in the Sugar City recently will spur the local economy to new heights. Work on the resheeting of the Rara Levu Road in Tailevu has been completed. The work was carried out by the Fiji Roads Authority working with Fulton Hogan Highways and was completed over the Christmas break. Works include raising the road by 100 millimeters, widening it from 4 to 6 kilometers, following a combination of grading, compacting and graveling with grass rocks. The road is in a low-lying area that is prone to flooding and raising the height of the road is expected to help prevent this. The road is located 5 kilometers outside Nosori town. Not having a business knowledge or background doesn't mean one can be their own boss. This is true for Wilfred Vindukaria who owns cafes in Suva and Nosori. In our successful Fijian segment tonight, we will hear the story about how the 42-year-old man from Nasekul and Lambasa is the proud owner of Titotoka Behalcha. Successful Fijians is brought to you by the Fiji Development Bank, your partner in progress. Whoever would have thought selling hot cup of tea would be a good business idea. One man did, and five years later, Wilfred Vundikaria is enjoying the fruits of his labor. He's tried his hand at being a pilot. He was a telecom engineer for 10 years, another year spent at the Fiji Electricity Authority, and even flew out of the country to further his studies in electronics. But Wilfred says he was destined to make tea. When I was still a child or at a high school level, uh, I had the desire to have a business of my own. Eh? Um, because um, 
uh, when there are talks uh, between people in society, uh, among the Fijian community, uh, we always talk about uh, other our other brothers from the Asian brothers and brothers or communities who are successful in doing business and are running most of the businesses in our country and uh, we can also do the same uh, just uh, just as they are doing and uh, um, looking at um, them we can see that uh, they are successful in running businesses and um, like they are well off uh, financially and uh, we the indigenous community uh, often working for them and so I thought uh, that uh, I can have a business to my own. He started off his business after receiving a redundancy package from TFL. Looking for a location to kickstart his business wasn't easy but Wundi Karia says he was lucky to find a spot at the Kasabi Arcade for Tito Toka. Uh, first. Um, when it uh, began, uh, uh, they were, there were just plans to make that uh, place into business, uh, like uh, locations, business. But it wasn't built yet, so I had already uh, like secured a place there. But then uh, it took a while in starting, so I tried to uh, start it from Roger Bapadel Street, and that did not work out. So it was like two years before the business uh, could start. For thousands who flock into Suva every day, Tito Toka is the place for a breakfast of tea, scones, and vagalabalaba of Fijian pie. Tito Toka was also set up at the new Nosori Market facility last year, together with some new faces who are catering for the business. I really didn't uh, think about the employee part in the beginning. Uh, I just uh, thought of uh, having a business because it's a way of uh, increasing income. And uh, with the increase in income, you are able to uh, give also uh, more to those who you want to help. Um, but uh, when I started to run the business, I realized that, uh, that people, eh, employees, eh, uh, will be, I think, maybe the, the, the major part of uh, running the business. Eh? And um, so I had to really realize and uh, teach myself that um, uh, how to work with people, eh? how to treat them, how to care for them, and um, and uh, so that they feel secure uh, being employed and uh, and work willingly uh, to run the business. Yes. Most of us may think that running a business is tough, but Wundi Karia believes people can do anything they set their minds to. Wundi Karia adds that anyone who wants to run their own business needs to use their time wisely. I am thankful to God that uh, like I've been running now for 10 years. Eh? And uh, I think uh, the, if you're willing to commit yourself to like, becoming successful as a business person, and also a willingness to learn and apply uh, how to run a business, and, um, and I think you should be okay. The father of three has plans of running an electronics business, but time will tell. All he knows right now is that the tea business is the best. Sabay Ratambua, FBC News. Successful Fijians was brought to you by the Fiji Development Bank, your partner in progress. Coming up in sports, Coral Coast Sevens lives up to expectations. And Fiji under 23 skipper ready to lead. Stay with us for that and more. Bula, I'm Duri from Nasin Market. My choice is simple, Gold FM. Only the classic hits. My name is Yvonne. I'm from Nandi. I love Gold FM. Only the classic hits. Sayandra, my name is Sunny. Only the Gold FM at Golden Point Resort, Raki Raki. Hi, I'm Anna of Nasinu. When it comes to a radio, my choice is always Gold FM, only the classic hits. My name is Anna and I'm from uh, Nandi. I love listening to Gold FM, Gold FM, only the classic hits. Gold FM, only the classic hits. Welcome back, this is FBC Sports. 
The Bailey Coral Coast Sevens is being hailed a success at the completion of the three-day tournament yesterday. Organizers, coaches, and our National Sevens mentor shared similar sentiments about how the competition delivered its promise to showcase entertaining rugby. Talendo Dakataka reports. National Sevens player, the captain of... Police and wardens were the form teams of the Coral Coast Sevens from day one. So it was no surprise when they faced off against each other in the cup final. Police eventually took home the spoils and becoming the first team to win the title back to back. We were preparing for two weeks only. It was a sort of time. But uh, the only thing uh, we was a game plan was to, to defend the cup. We train on our defense, to defend our territory. That's what uh, you're going to face if you go to the international level. Fiji 7s coach Ben Ryan gave his thumbs up on the performance on the field as he zeroes in on preparation for the Wellington and Sydney 7s. Yeah, I thought there were some, some good teams. Um, you know, most of the teams looked pretty fit. They all looked quite big and strong as well. So no, there's plenty of talent here, that's for sure. It was an overall success for the organisers who are always looking to showcase the abundance of talent into three days of competition. The, the rugby that we got to see today is just another testament to, to the, the growth and the strength of Fiji rugby. Uh, North Fiji and final and then the Fijiana winning the, uh, the women's final, taking home the Nau trophy and it's just, yeah, just all goes well for what's coming up in August in the uh, Olympics. Police and Telecom Fijiana Makosoi collected $20,000 each for winning the men's and women's titles respectively. Talendo Kazaka, FBC Sports. The Fiji National Rugby League is seeing players flooding into the 13-man code. During the FNRL Sports Awards, officials show the intentions of developing the code even further in the coming years. We have registered more than 50 active clubs nationwide, more than 24 schools playing in the age grades. And last year, women players have expressed the interest to showcase their skills in the sport. Meanwhile, the Vodafone Cup competition will kick off in April. And finally, in the English Premier League, Chelsea pulled off a lucky escape with a three-all draw against Everton. But the result came at a high cost with star player Diego Costa succumbing to a shin injury. <music> Afternoon showers were experienced over most places today. A moist southeast wind flow prevails over the Fiji group. Temperatures were more or less constant over Fiji with major centers recording low 30s today. Tomorrow's forecast is for more afternoon showers in most places. Further outlook occasional showers of the eastern parts in interior of the larger islands, afternoon or evening showers elsewhere, southeast winds 15 to 20 knots, moderate seas. And recapping our main stories again, military recruitment to continue in 2016, Singapore Talk's local economy riding on a high, and Health Ministry to hold public discussions in Northern Division. On to this week's question, and we are asking, do you support the decision to extend the rent freeze? Visit our FBC website to take part. Remember, you can send us newsworthy pictures and videos on email citizensize at fbc.com.fj or share with us our Facebook page, FBC News, or if you're on Twitter, Follow and tweet us your news tips at FBC News or simply hashtag FBC News. You've been watching FBC News. I'm Akusita Tale. Good night. I'm Sarah. I'm from Tafwa and I love listening to Today FM, Today FM Rocks. My name is Freddy. I'm uh, from Gamiatong. I listen to Mario on the traffic jam every afternoon. Hi, my name is Sala. I live in Asinu. Today FM Rocks. My name is Denasa and I'm from Lutoka and I love listening to Today FM. My name is Mulamila, I work at Golden Point Resort. I love listening to Today FM, it rocks in Rakiraki. I'm Mary from Mandera. I love listening to Today FM, Today FM rocks. We love listening to Today FM, Today FM rocks. Today's hit music on Today FM.